Hello, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And today we're going to start off our uh, PowerShell series. So this will be video one in a several part series. It's going to go through everything from the basics of PowerShell to how to do some really awesome stuff in PowerShell. All in a pretty short amount of time because let's face it, you don't want to watch really long videos on PowerShell. So this first video we're going to kind of cover the basics. So things like, um, you know, variables and aliases and get commands, get help, you know, just trying to, some of that core stuff that if you're just totally new to PowerShell and you're like, how do I even get started? This is the video for you. Video two is going to be how to deal with objects. So one of the great things about PowerShell is instead of like the command prompt where we just get a bunch of text back, PowerShell will get a bunch of uh, objects back. And so we need to learn how to manipulate those. So select those and uh, sort those and where and um, for each objects, you know, lots of different commands. So we're going to take a really gnarly script that I'll show you at the end of this video and um, work through that and figure out how to make all those fun things happen for you. In video three, we're going to just talk about some of the other commandlets that I think you should know. So maybe some more refinement of the object work, maybe things like what if, different parameters, just some core tenets of PowerShell that while you can probably get by in PowerShell without knowing a lot of those, there's going to be kind of a bunch of here's random stuff that make your life easier if you embrace it. Uh, video four will be all about SharePoint. So using SharePoint and PowerShell. So it'd be kind of like the first three videos, but just put in the context of SharePoint. I realize that a lot of my audience really just wants to learn PowerShell from the SharePoint uh, point of view. Um, the reason I'm teaching the video series is all up though is because I really feel like you need to embrace PowerShell not only for SharePoint, but for things like Azure and AD and even manipulating your own desktop. Um, so speaking of Azure, video five will be all about Azure uh, PowerShell. So how to get that installed on your machine, right? You have to go out and install it and update some things. And then once you get that installed, we need to be able to connect to it and then kind of manipulate the different Azure objects. So I use uh, my Azure scripts to start all my VMs or turn off all my VMs. You know, there's other ways to do it, but those are just good beginning tasks because it's something you can accomplish and see accomplished using uh, PowerShell. So that'll be video five. And then after that, video six to infinity. Those are just going to be based on questions I get from you, whether that's on Twitter or if you leave comments down below, you know, if you have more questions, you're confused, you just want to see me go deep on a specific subject, um, just, you know, those will be random videos, so. All right, so to get started here, we're on my Windows 10 anniversary updated uh, PC, but you could definitely be, you know, on your servers or any of those type of places, right? PowerShell transcends uh, for quite a bit of time now, so. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit my start button, and then I'm going to start typing in PowerShell. And you'll see that you get a lot of different options. And so predominantly what we're going to start with this for this video is we're going to do the Windows PowerShell. So this is a regular desktop app. Um, you could use the integrated scripting environment, the ISE, and the x86, the old 32-bit stuff. We're not going to mess with any of that. But uh, right now we're going to ignore the ISE. I like to start with just the plain old uh, prompt. So I'm going to right-click here, and I'm going to say Run as Administrator. Now you always want to run PowerShells. Oh, I get my little pop-up here. Say yes. You always want to run PowerShell as an administrator uh, just because it, it lets you do everything, right? It's nothing more frustrating than you're kind of working through problems like what is going on? Why won't this work? Why won't that work? And you realize it's because you didn't have enough access to the specific object you're trying to manipulate with. There's probably some reason in the world not to run PowerShell as administrator. I haven't found it yet, so I pretty much always run it as administrator. And before we jump in and start typing and making magic happen here, what I want you to do is I want you to right click up here and then do properties. And so here this lets you set some of the different uh, properties for this particular console. So cursor size, how much buffer do you want to keep. A couple of things you want to check on though. You want to make sure you have quick edit mode check turn, turned on. That allows you to highlight the text, copy and paste and that type of stuff. Uh, so in Windows 10 I think it's turned on by default, but some of the older uh, environments it's not, so you want to check that on yours. And then if we go over here to font, I always like to kind of adjust this to make it as readable as possible. So I've went ahead and bumped mine up to 24, so that way it's a nice big font. So hopefully it translates pretty well for you guys on YouTube. Uh, but find the kind of setting that works the best for you. And then I'm also, don't mess with the layout, 
I also usually like to change all the colors to something cool. I usually go with a black and a neon green. This color, you know, gives me that old AS400 hacker type of hiding in my closet type of feel. But uh, for today, we'll just go ahead and leave it on the default setting. So I'm going to say OK. So that gets uh, our console window set up. It, if you change any of the settings, yours might have resized. Nothing too big of a deal. And so the first thing I want you to type is tart-transcript. Um, and so you notice I stopped typing portion of the way through there, right? One of the great things about PowerShell is you can use tab complete. So I typed in start dash trans and hit tab to get to transcript finished. And then I'm going to press enter. Now, uh, that went ahead and started us a transcript. So it's going to keep a running log of everything that we do in this session. And we're actually going to talk about that a little more towards the end of the video once we've already uh, done that. But start transcript is a great thing, especially when you're learning, and really forever, to always be the first thing you type in. Because there's nothing more frustrating, and I've experienced it a hundred times, become a dummy, is solving a problem in PowerShell, working through how to write that script to do the thing that you want to do, and then closing PowerShell and realizing it's just gone. Right? There's no history of this by default unless you do a start-transcript. And so then now everything that we do in this session, everything we type in, and everything that's displayed on the screen, will show up in our transcript file. So very helpful for us. OK, so we got the little blinky cursor here. So the first thing I always like to type when I'm trying to learn what's going on here is I'm going to type in get-com and hit tab to autocomplete get-command. Press Enter. And so this is going to scroll for a minute here. Um, it's going to show us everything that's available to us in PowerShell, all the different commandlets, all the little functions, if you will, that we can run um, in this particular console section. So um, session, not section. And so what this does is this gives us an idea of all the options. I'm actually tired of it scrolling, so I'm going to hit Control-C. That just tells it to stop doing what it's doing. Um, so that's everything. You're more than welcome to take that. Right? It'd be all written in the uh, transcript file and read through all those if you wanted, but that's a lot. So one of the things we want to do is we want to take advantage of the fact that PowerShell has a set of rules. And this, one of the set of rules says is everything has to be in the form of verb dash noun or action slash object. Right? So when we typed in get dash command, right, we can see that get is our verb, then dash, Noun is command. So get command is a proper PowerShell uh, commandlet and it's in that format. So knowing that we have that format, what I want to do now is I'm going to say get command. I'm going to do dash noun. So, right, the thing that's on the right side of the dash. And I want to return all of the ones. Maybe I want to return everything that starts with S and then a star. So this is just all of the commandlets that are have a, a noun that is S and then star. So it kind of lets us filter out a little bit more. That's still pretty overwhelming. So let's try something a little more specific. So I see that there's a service something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a get dash command and then dash noun service. Hey, that's kind of helpful, right? So this command, like get command, we gave it the parameter of dash noun. Uh, and we said for the, the value for that is service. So it just returned eight objects here. And that is the eight different commandlets that are available for uh, manipulating or working with a service. So we can get a service, new service, restart service, resume, blah, 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 blah. So this is one of those great things about PowerShell. The sooner you understand it, the better. But because Microsoft enforces a set of rules that verbs have to be specific ones, right? They can't just create verbs on their own. They have to use a core set that the uh, Microsoft PowerShell team uh, specifies. It makes learning PowerShell a lot easier, right? You're going to find that almost exclusively you always start with get. And you'll just be used to the fact that there's a get command for just about everything. So knowing that, that then we can look at the noun side. And so once we found the, uh, the noun for service, we know that here's all the different things that I can do to that particular object. So for services, I can get them, I can new them, I can restart them, et cetera, et cetera. So let's try one of these commands. And so what I would do here is I would say get dash command. Oh, I'm sorry, I wouldn't say that. I'd say get dash service and just hit enter. And after a little bit of scrolling there, you can see that it actually listed all of the different services. Let's scroll back up real quick. Okay, so it listed out the name of all the services 
uh, so the internal name, the display name, and then their current status. That's pretty cool. So that gives us some good information back. And then unlike the command prompt, which we've used for so many years, where we just got back this screen dumped on text, these are actually objects. This is the whole object for that service. So the all join router service, I have no idea what that is, that object was returned um, and it has a status of stop, but we can actually go manipulate that uh, particular object. So let's scroll to the bottom here again. So we found get service, it lists all the commands, but I'm now interested in what all can get service do for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you another command, it's called get dash help. This is one of those core ones, and then we'll say get dash help, get dash service. I can hit tab to complete as well. And if we hit enter, ah, oh, there you go, it says, hey, I'm happy to offer you the help that's here, but I know it's been a while since you've updated the help system. Do you want me to go out to the internet and get the latest version of the uh, PowerShell help? Absolutely. So I'm going to say yes and hit enter. And so now it's going out, it's hitting those uh, web or services Microsoft makes available. And if it finds updated help files, it's going to start spinning through those. We're going to wait just patiently, just for a second. Okay, so you can see it's starting, so I'm actually going to pause the video while these process, and then we'll come back uh, when it finishes. Okay, so that took mm, about two minutes or so. And as you can see, after it finished, it actually just dumped out all of the help. So let's type it in again so we can see a little cleaner here. So Now, I could type all this out again, or we'll backspace. And if we press the up button, that gives us the last command that we ran in history. So... Okay, so this will show you a hey, get service, gets the services on a local or remote computer. Good to know. We'll cover that in later videos, how to deal with uh, remote sources. And it gives you some kind of syntaxy stuff, description. It says here's the other related pieces. But down here it has a much better advice. It's like, you know, if you really want to do this, what you might want to try is hit the up arrow and then type dash examples at the end. So one of the rules of PowerShell, oh, this guy's got 11 examples is that every PowerShell command has to have help, and the help always has to have examples. So when you find a new command that you're interested in, it's almost easiest to always just get help, the commandlet, and then dash examples. So you can jump in here and start figuring out what, um, what it can do or not do. Now, I will warn you, though, that we found that, you know, it says they have to have examples, but they don't have to be right. Uh, they are just typed in by a human being. So sometimes you find typos in the examples and stuff. Just power through it and kind of use your brain. Like if you see, you know, it says, all it says get dash services, you know that's probably just a typo and uh, you should just fix that. But so this will give you examples of different ways to work through um, using get service and some of the options available to you. So that's pretty neat. Let's scroll to the bottom again. So the next thing you can also do, oh, here we'll do get services, is instead of dash um, examples, so you can do dash online. And so when we do this, what's going to happen is it's actually going to take us to a uh, Internet Explorer, so it's going to take us off the Internet into TechNet, and it's going to say, here's all the stuff about that particular commandlet. And so this is going to have the syntax, the detailed, the parameters. So there's different parameters that are involved with PowerShell. Uh, right, that was that, that dash noun that we did earlier, for, right, for example. Right, that was a parameter. So when you start doing more advanced stuff, sometimes it's really helpful to come in here and look at parameters and say, hey, what type of input does it accept? Can I use wild cards? Um, you know, if it uses true-false, which are the types of true-false does it use? There's a lot of that little stuff that can be uh, learned from this as you go along. But yeah, so here's all the parameters, an update on all them, some notes, and then all of our examples again. So another great place, this gives you a chance to read without having to, uh, you know, Look at that tiny little blinking font, especially you got that black and green screen or something going. So all right, we'll minimize Internet Explorer for the moment. Okay, so that gets us through um, getting some help off of this particular command. So let's clear off our screen. So I'm typing CLS. Now you notice I just typed in CLS, right? I hit the up to show you, but that's not in the form of verb dash noun. So what that is is that is actually called an alias. So to make PowerShell easier, Microsoft allows you to use aliases, and they have aliases for some of the different common things that we're used to, right? So CLS, or you know, if I wanted to uh, back up a directory, like in DOS, CD backslash. 
Now, aliases though, they can be a little confusing. So what I always recommend when you're learning PowerShell is to never use aliases and to always translate them. So if somebody like me shows you CLS, don't accept it. Just say, all right, how do I figure that out? And so what you wanna do is you wanna use a command like called get-alias and then you type in CLS. And it's gonna say that CLS is actually clear-host, right? Clear being the verb and host being the object, which is the console window that we're uh, operating in here. So anytime you see something you don't understand, it's not in the right form, I always wanna use get alias. You can also just type in get alias. Whew, and there's a whole bunch of them, but it's gonna give you all of the different aliases that uh, this particular session knows about. So if uh, you can go through them, you know, if we scroll, like let's scroll up here real quick. And so for example, DIR is get child item. So now I know if I'm trying to kind of deal with uh, folders and such, child items probably what I want to do. Or we you know we did clear host, and so that was CLS. You also notice that while they have all of the uh, command prompt ones, they also have a lot of the Unix ones. So uh, like right in Unix, you can do a uh, LS in place of a DIR, right? DI DIR in Windows and LS in um, Unix mean roughly the same thing, so they both map to get child item. Man is the help system in Unix, and that is uh, maps to help. So that's a very important step when getting started, right? That was one of the things that really overwhelmed me when I was trying to get going with this, is people would send me these giant scripts, say, here, run this, and they'd use all these aliases, all the shorthand, and I couldn't translate what any of it meant. And so once I learned to get, get alias, I'd take their script, I'd translate everything, and then when it's all on that verb dash noun form, it's a lot easier to consume. So get alias is a very important commandlet for you guys to uh, be familiar with. All right, so I'm going to clear my screen again. And so that now that we know that one, um, what I want to do is I want to show you another PowerShell commandlet. Not that, not that this is one that is part of learning your core, but this will give us a chance to play with some things. So if we do get dash process, right? That is a PowerShell commandlet that essentially does the same thing that Task Manager does, right? It shows us all the running processes, the handles, the workers, how many CPUs it's doing, its IDs, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a nice one. Um, and what we're gonna do is we wanna get a specific process. So good old Microsoft Edge, right? We turn on Edge when you open up uh, the prompt there. So what we can do is we can type in get Oh, now I get command, get process, right, space, and then hit dash, and then we can do it by dash name, and so we could do Microsoft Edge, and I was able to tab complete that as well, because PowerShell can be pretty smart, and so that would return just that particular uh, process for us, All right, and you can see it's still, Edge is still running down here. Um, so with that, what you might want to look at is you want to be like, hey, I'm interested in what's there, right? I keep telling you guys this is an object, but I keep just showing you text like you're used to. So hit up, and then we're going to take that, and we're going to pipe it. And so this little the, uh, vertical pipe, right, kind of over there above your inner key on most keyboards, um, that is says, hey, take the output of this commandlet and send its object or objects over to the other side, right? So this is where we really start to get away from the old DOS prompt. And so here I want to do is I'm going to say, I want to take that and I want to pipe that over to get member. And so let's scroll to the top again. So get dash member, this is another one of those key PowerShell commands that you do need to learn, right? We don't care about get process, we care about get member. And so get member shows you all of the properties and all of the methods associated with a specific object. So in this case, our object type, right? So system diagnostics is a process object type. And so if you scroll through this list, you can see that there's all these methods. So all the things that you can do, uh, you know, methods are actions, right? And so we always use the car analogy. So car.start, car.stop, uh, car. Uh, you know, open the door, right? Different things that you can do to the object. So that's what a method is. And then we have properties. And so properties are gonna be um, just out of property of the car. So car.color is red, car.number of doors is four, car.make is, you know, Pontiac. Whatever you might wanna do there, I don't even know, do they even make Pontiacs anymore? 
I might be going back in the history books. Um, anyway, so properties are the things that we know about a particular object. So method, right? Um, you can kill an object. So you could kill that particular object. You could kill the process of Microsoft Edge. Man, good to know. A lot of people like to kill Microsoft Edge permanently. Um, properties, you know, maybe you need to know what machine name it's running on or um, let's see, what's an interesting one? How much CPU is it using? What's its working set for memory? That type of stuff. So the different properties about that uh, object. So when you look at those, one of the things I like to do, so that's a way for me to discover, right? When we start trying to dig in, this is getting us, starting to get us down that road a little more advanced, but starting to understand that you can manipulate those objects and work with them takes you down the road. So if we do this, so instead of get member this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say select, I know I'm cheating because this is going to be what the next class is mostly about, but select object star, and that's going to return all of the properties about this guy and their values. So his name is Microsoft Edge. Um, you know, his file a priority is normal. How much CPU times he used, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, what's his real name? Um, this gives you all that different information. And so while this isn't really interesting for a process per se, but when we get into like SharePoint later and we do this for a site collection, we can see users and webs and lists and all that fun stuff. Or when we do it for Azure, we can look at a VM and then see, you know, what are the different properties of that VM and how might we manipulate those? What size was it built with? What processor? You know, that, that type of stuff. So it's very important to understand that this concept of uh, getting the member, right, showing you all the different things you can do with it, and then selecting the objects, and then finding the values. Um, you know, for example, PowerShell, there's PowerShell out there, you can change the master page of your SharePoint site collection by coming in here and editing the property. Pretty cool stuff. Just takes a little digging and uh, poking. I'll type in CLS again. And so that's one of the interesting things is once you understand that PowerShell is more than just like the command prompt that we're used to just kind of manipulating, doing add many things, stopping and starting uh, task, you can start to do some developer -y stuff. You can create a list with PowerShell. You can edit the items in a list in PowerShell. You can, uh, you know, create VMs, lots of, lots of cool stuff. So it's why we're kind of learning and putting all these little pieces in place. Um, so the next concept I want to talk about here is variables. And so with variables with PowerShell, they're always prefaced with a dollar sign. And the nice thing about uh, PowerShell variables is that to create one, you literally just type it, so dollar sign zebra for our friends, bull zebras, <laughs> and um, we just say equals, and then we could do get process um, Microsoft Edge again. So just like that, what happens is uh, PowerShell is pretty smart. It says, oh, you, you passed me this type of um, object into the variable. So it assigned the value of the variable to correspond with that. And one of the things you always want to do after you set a variable, is you just want to uh, do it. And you can tab complete it as well. There's my tab key. And that just confirms for me that something did get set in the variable. It's always a good idea after you set a variable to just type that so you don't have to troubleshoot, you know, you hate to set a blank variable because you've had a typo and then fight with why can't I manipulate that variable. So now that dollar sign zebra is in there, I have that object, right? It's not just these words on the screen, it's the actual whole object. I could do dollar sign zebra and then dot and then if I start tabbing, right, dollar sign, there's name. It's Microsoft, Microsoft Edge. So I'm tabbing through, you tab through the properties and the methods. So this is how you can really drill in and start to do a lot more with it. So for example, remember earlier we saw there was a um, method called kill, right? And so dollar sign zebra dot kill and then open and close parentheses. Look down here at the bottom, we got get service, um, that edge window. Boom, no more Microsoft Edge because we were able to use the method of kill the uh, kill that process so a lot of fun to be had you know this is the type of stuff we're going to kind of continue to get in through the series but it's starting to help you hopefully see that there's a good value in understanding more about PowerShell as well uh, thanks to the variables so a couple more things here and we'll finish up almost done so a uh, great thing here for you to know about is get dash history 
And so what get das history is, you can probably guess now, um, is just a list of all the PowerShell commandlets I've ran in this session. It's not saved anywhere, it's just available here, but right, if I start pressing my up key, I can flip my way through those. Um, and I can manipulate them, right? So I can go halfway up there and do it. So it's important to know you go up and down and you know you use get history to kind of rattle your brain what were you playing with there. Uh, the last thing I want to show you here was we did the uh, start transcript earlier. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to my PC and okay so here is the transcript for this particular session. So you can see I had to open it from um, my PC location and when we did the start transcript it told us where it put it. But so then this is everything that we did that entire session. Clearly we don't want to rehash all that but whoa, there's a lot of stuff. Um, but start dash transcript was what gave us all of that um, things. And by default, or you can when you do start dash transcript, it puts it in your documents folder for you. Uh, you can manipulate that, right? It's so if I want to figure out how to manipulate that, I'd say start, I'd say get dash help, start dash transcript. And you'd see that you know you can set a, a path here. You can do a pin, you can force it, all types of fun things. Uh, so it gives you options for controlling where those go. And I bet if we do, I didn't check this earlier, I hope I'm not wrong, but I bet if we do examples, there you go. So start transcript, path, this location, no clobber. Um, and it would stop anything else from being overwritten. So pretty cool stuff. All right. So I think that will get us through the uh, core basics we want to run. So in the next session, what we're going to do, let me slide this over so you can see it, is we're actually going to talk about this script. So we're going to take everything we just did here and uh, go really fast. <laughs> right? So we can see we're getting into, or we're going to run a commandlet, we're going to pipe it over to a where object. So uh, we're going to do some kind of filtering there. And then we're going to... Um, talk about you know these things like dash gt for greater than and then we're going to learn about some looping right so for each object we're going to write out we're going to do some math it will be a good time so and don't judge my script my script is terrible there's better ways to do it but it's a great script to actually teach you guys how to do things so that'll be next time okay so that finishes it up for today hopefully you enjoyed it remember this is part one of many so definitely check out the rest of the series as you go along and uh, leave me comments on things you'd like to see more of, less of, things I did that were confusing. Um, always happy to, in those subsequent videos, kind of come back and revisit some of those different topics as well. And also, uh, you can subscribe to the channel if that is uh, the type of stuff you enjoy seeing. And then you can hit me up on Twitter, at Shane's Cows, or if you want to work together on a project, good old boldzebras.com. Thanks. Have a great day.